Uh, this morning we're going to start in Sukhasana Easy Seat as we come into our meditation. If you prefer to have the hips over the knees and you have a, a block, you have um, a blanket, a bolster, um, a book, whatever you want, just place it under if you find it more comfortable. And then just root down through the sits bones. Draw your navel up and in and feel your spine lengthen your crown up toward the ceiling. Allow the shoulders to just slide down the back. Trying to remove the tension from the face, maybe soften the jaw. Maybe slide the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. And if it feels good, close down the eye. And together, let's start class the best way in the world. A nice deep inhale through the nose. Just feel your belly expand. Nice and slow, exhale through the nose. Draw the navel back toward the spine. A little bit deeper this time. Inhale through the nose. Let the belly expand, then the ribs. And a little bit slower. Exhale, navel back in toward the spine. Nice. Deepest one yet. Inhale through the nose, belly, ribs, collarbone. Slower than the, boat, the previous two. Exhale, collarbone, ribs, and belly. And then just start to fall into your own rhythm. Deep inhales. Maybe to the count of three or four. At the top of the inhale, pause. Hold your breath just for a moment. And then nice and steady, exhale. Maybe to the count of five or six. And then just start to find that rhythm. Right? Make it your own. But get lost in that rhythm. Take a moment to start to observe your surroundings, which are most likely surroundings you've been in for a couple of days now. But take a moment to really observe. Notice things like the temperature in the room, the scent of the room, the way the air feels against the skin. start to take that same awareness and start to observe the physical body. You know, where in the body do you feel tight? Where do you feel sore? Where, what feels restricted? What's your energy level like right now? Are you tired? Are you sluggish? Are you energetic? Are you alert? Without judgment, just take a moment to notice how you feel. Then the next time you inhale, just drop your chin to your chest. Feel your neck get nice and long. Feel your cervical spine stretch. And then slowly take your chin to the sky. Take your head back through center, like an owl, chin to the right shoulder. And you're starting to open up the neck from all angles. Exhale, chin to the left. Come on back through center, and then drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Roll the chin to the chest. Left ear, left shoulder. And roll the chin back and to the right. And then just between the two points, let the head sway. You'll start to feel this stretch in the cervical spine, maybe even the thoracic spine along the shoulder blades. But do what feels good, which can include letting the head fall back for some full circles. But sit up tall and breathe. If you're taking full circles, maybe start taking them in the other direction. Nice. One more. And then let's slowly take the head back through center, stack it on top of the shoulders, readjust in the seat if you want, take the hands to heart center, prayer, and then interlace the fingers, start to press the palms away, 
Draw the navel in, round the spine, and then roll the chin to the chest, deep inhale. And as you exhale, take the hand straight to the sky, palms face up, look up, biceps frame out the ears, deep breath, inhale. And then as you exhale, let the right hand slide to the mat, come up and over, a little side bend. Try to keep your left hip tacked down. Try to keep your left ribs long. And if you can help it, the hand might be doing something like this. Try to keep the hand nice and extended. One more deep breath. Very cool. On the inhale, right hand up. On the exhale, left hand down. Right. Long line of energy along the right side of the body. Inhale, left hand up. Exhale, twist to the right. Left hand, right thigh, right hand behind the tailbone. Maybe we tent the fingertips. Let's sit up tall, navel in, and soften the shoulders. Inhale, unwind, sweep it up. And exhale to the other side. Exhale, palms to the knees. Let's just take a moment to open up the low back. So readjust in the seat. Inhale, lean forward. Start to take the shoulders, torso to the right. As you exhale, round the spine, hollow out the belly, roll the chin to the chest. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Right, you start to move between these two points. You can really exaggerate the movements, right? Start to feel the thoracic spine right between the shoulder blades. And the lumbar spine, the lower portion of the back, just start to open. Take one more in this direction. Nice. The next time you inhale, pause for a moment. Let's go in the other direction. All right. One more good one. I honestly could do this all morning. It feels so good on my low back. And then as we exhale, let's come on back through center. Readjust in the seat, Sukhasana. Let's do a light stretch of the shoulders and a little stretch of the hamstrings. Then we'll really start to move. Take your arms out like a T. Now, you could grab for opposite shoulder blades depending on how the shoulders feel, but if you feel pretty good today, take the right arm under the left, wrap the forearms, maybe the palms touch. This is perfect, right? Because what you'll feel like is the elbows start to drop, you'll want the hands to rest on the face, but what you want to do is try to draw the elbows in line with the shoulders, and then try to walk the forearms forward. You're trying to create a little bit of space between your nose and your forearms. Shoulder blades are spreading away from the spine. Try to stick with that same breath pattern. One more. Now, you can absolutely stay here, or if you want to isolate the left shoulder, try to take your elbows and forearms to the right. Now, if you twist from the waist, that's fine, it's not the end of the world, but try to keep the belly button forward as the elbows and forearms go to the right. And then slowly bring the hands back through center. And like it's a clock, take your hands to 11 o'clock on the clock, so they just drop to the left. Right of your right shoulder. One more. You're gonna get this stretch right along the left side of the neck into the shoulder blade. Slowly come on back. Unwrap the hands. Take the hands behind the back body. I'm sorry, plant the hands on the mat, that's better. Still behind the back body though. Fingertips face forward and then press the chest to the sky, let the head fall back. If you want, navel in, engage the glutes and press the hip flexors to the sky. Soften the shoulder blades for three, two, one. And then gently lower the hips down. Let's work the other side. Take the arms out like a T. And then left arm under right. Elbows up, forearms forward. It's like your shoulders are literally like wrapping away from your spine. And then let the elbows and forearms drift to the left. Right along the head of that right shoulder is where you're gonna feel this. One more. Now, 
Now, as we come back through center, the hands are going to drop to the right. right? Like one o'clock on the clock, left ear, left shoulder. Right along the right side of the neck, into the shoulder blade is where you'll feel this. And then gently, let's come on back. Unwrap the hands. This time, let's take them behind the back body, interlace the fingers. Maybe the palms touch. Try to soften the shoulder blades towards one another. Inhale, look up. And then exhale, lead with the chest forward fold. Don't look forward with the neck. Try to look, tuck the chin in. Keep the neck long. Soften the shoulder blades for three, two, one. And then slowly come up. And just a gentle warm up the lower half of the body. Then we're going to move significantly. Take the soles of the feet together. Let the knees kind of open for body canasana. You can start to just kind of like I don't know, shimmy the knees. What is this? I don't know. Butterfly we're, we're butterflying the knees, shimmy the knees. I don't know. And then do that for a second just to open up the hips and the joints. Take one breath. Find stillness. And then draw the heart and chin up. Inhale. And then lead with the chest. Try to keep a nice flat back forward fold. Right? Don't round in. Draw the heart forward. This could be the first kind of, you know, opening to the, uh, the inner hips and the groin. So it doesn't have to be the deepest version. One more breath. And then slowly walk the hands back. Straighten the legs, bring them out in front, flex the toes. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, lead with the chest, Paschimottanasana, forward fold. Again, could be the first forward fold. We're just introducing a little love to the hamstrings. Doesn't have to be the deepest variation. For three, two, and then on one, slowly come on back up. Take the soles of the feet to the mat. Hold on to the back of the hamstrings, draw the navel in, slide the shoulders down the back, and then start to rock back. Find that place on your sits bones where you can balance for Navasana Boat Pose. Right. So notice how Ash is she's set up perfectly here. You can't see it, but she's definitely drawing her navel in. I know that because her shoulders slide down the back and her heart draws forward, right? That's where she get, gathers that strain. She's flexing her feet. And I assume that the, the calves and the inner thighs are engaged. Ash, can you help me here? Yes. Yep, see? You heard it here, folks. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, let me start to lower down. Find your way to low boat, little Navasana. Navel in. Keep the shoulders sliding down the back. Keep the inner thighs engaged. Now you can stay here or cross the right leg over the left and then switch, and then switch, and then switch. This is what we're gonna do for the next 50 minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. For five, four, three, two, one, find stillness, come on up high boat for three, two, and then on one, soften the feet to the mat, cross the ankles, hug the knees in, and then roll over those knees. Let's come to tabletop pose. Let's do some yoga. So tabletop pose, right? Pretty simple here. We got the knees under the hips. We have the wrists under the shoulders. Not mat distance apart. Your, your shoulders aren't that big. Right under the shoulder blades. Give yourself a nice steady base. Now as we inhale, let's tilt the tailbone up. Let the belly drop. Draw the heart and chin forward. Cow pose. As we exhale, tuck the tailbone, navel to the spine, chin to the chest, and that's cat pose. Inhale, tailbone lifts, belly drops, chin up. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, navel to the spine, chin to the chest. Really puff those shoulder blades. And now just start to flow between the two. Inhale, exhale, cat and cow. Right? You can close the eyes. And as you start to do this, right, maybe you start to exaggerate it a little bit. So you're inhale, cat, cow. And then maybe you start to sway the hips and the torso. Maybe you start to just rock the hips from side to side. Or possibly even turn the fingertips to the knees to open the wrist. Right? These are all things we can do here to help warm the body up for our practice. Right? So we ask the body what it wants, and then give it what it wants. It's the most yoga thing I've ever said. <laughs> right? Take two more breaths. There's literally no wrong answer. Last one. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> 
let's ease our way back into tabletop. What I'd like you to do is take your left leg to the left side of your mat like a little kickstand, and then take your right leg to the back of your mat. Your left hand's just gonna stay where it is. You're just gonna sweep the right hand to the sky. We're in this like modified side plank. Now, if you can help it, try to keep your foot, your knee, and your hand in line, just like that. Now, you might be saying, guys, this is too easy. If that's the case, take your right leg to hip height, push the heel out like a karate kick. Look at that karate kick. And then take your bicep of your right hand, run it along your right ear, palm face down. If you can help it, draw your right shoulder blade back and extend in both directions. The whole right side of your body is engaged. By all means, stay here or bend your right knee. Take your right hand to the top of that foot. If you want to get the quad, push the heel, pull the heel toward the glute. If you want more of a heart opener, like Ash is doing, push the foot into the hand, and you're going to feel this expansion across the collarbone. One more breath. Good stuff, Ash. And then we're going to come on back through center, right hand to the mat, or right foot to the mat, right hand to the sky. My apologies. Now use the belly here, use the core to lift you up. Like don't, don't push yourself off the mat. Take a deep inhale. Now as you exhale, navel in, lift up, left hand to the sky, right hand to the knee, gate pose, long left ribs. Right, you can look up, deep inhale. Now we're gonna add a little movement. As you exhale, left hand to the mat, right fingertips to the top of the mat, lift the right leg off the mat, you're in that side plank extension, and then come on back, right hand down, come on up, gate pose. Give me one more good one. Left hand down, right fingertips forward, right heel presses out. Yep. And then come on up. I'm totally blocking, Ashley. <laughs> and then come on back down, left hand to the mat. Right hand to the mat. You'll notice your right toes are tucked. Just give it a little rock. Just get the calf going, just for a second. And then let's find stillness. Come back to tabletop. Take your right leg out. Left leg to the back of the mat, left hand to the sky. We're doing our modified side plank on the other side. Right now, by all means, stay here. If this is where you like and this is where you're at today, stay here. But if you want a little more, left leg to hip height, flex the heel, nice. Left bicep along the left ear, palm faces down. And then try to pull that top shoulder blade back. You'll almost feel it click into place. Now, you want to bend the knee, bend the knee. You want to reach for the top of the foot? Either draw the heel toward the glute to get the quad, or push the foot away into the hand to open the heart. Options, options, options. Give me one more good one, guys. Yeah, and then just like that, nice and slow, extend back, put the foot on the mat, and then use the inhale to come on up, gate pose, left hand, left knee, long right rib cage, sick, dude. Right hand to the mat, and then come back in, left bicep frames the ear, Lift the leg. Yeah, we're going to do that two more times. Come on up. And then right back down. One more time. Nice, Ash. Come on back up. Very clean. And then right back down. Let's come on back up. Put the right hand back on the mat. Sorry, Ash. Left hand down. Yeah, square the hips. And then those back toes. I think your left foot is tough. We're just giving it a little rock. Now from here, find stillness, well, like three quarters of the way there, and then take your right leg, step it back to meet the left, and boom, we're in plank pose. So plank pose. Try to keep the weight toward the index and thumb and extend the arms. You wanna feel like your biceps draw towards one another. That's gonna activate the chest, and you're gonna feel like you're pushing the back of your heart to the ceiling. Keep the navel in. Engage the quads, the glutes, and the calves. Take a deep inhale. Now use your exhale to take the hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, the downward facing dog. Long. Try to extend the arms, soften the shoulders, and press your chest back. You want to start to pedal the feet? Bend the knees, straighten the leg. Go ahead and do it. Let's walk a dog. Right? Now this always turns into a little bit more, right? So you could pedal the feet, or you could come up, up high on the toes, press the chest back, and soften the heels. You could sway the hips from side to side or roll out to plank. You can even lift one leg at a time in the air. Do what feels good. I want you to take like five deep breaths. Two 
two more breaths wherever you're at. And then we'll settle into down dog. So I'd like to continue to build some heat and keep warming up the shoulders. So inhale, come up high on the toes, tilt your hips to the sky and tuck your chin to your chest. Now as you exhale, roll over the toes, high plank, high push up, take an inhale. Exhale, down dog. And then roll it out to plank. And then take it back down dog. Three more times, plank pose. Inhale, exhale, down dog. Two more, roll it out, roll it back. Now roll it out, hang out in plank for a second. I just wanna warm up the belly just a little bit more before we really start to get into some yoga. So from here, you're in plank. You wanna stay in plank, stay in plank. But you wanna add a little more, put your right forearm on the mat. And your left forearm on the mat. So now this is forearm plank. The glutes are engaged, the quads are engaged, the heels are right over the toes. But this might stink, so you wanna get out of the pose. Put your right hand on the mat. Then your left hand on the mat, plank pose. And then your left forearm on the mat, right forearm on the mat, left hand on the mat, right hand on the mat. And then right forearm, left forearm, right hand, left hand for five. Go in and out of these poses for four. Try to keep the navel in, try to let the hips stay neutral. Three, two, one. And then we'll be back in plank, deep inhale. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Yeah. Inhale, look to those hands. Exhale, little tiny tiptoe steps. Let's walk our feet to the top of the mat. And the second we get here, forward fold Uttanasana. Weight can stay in the toes, soft knees, your head, your torso are just heavy, right? I personally like to let my hands dangle, but if you like to reach for opposite elbows, ears in between the biceps, do what feels good, right? Sway, shake the head yes and no. You could be totally still. There's no wrong answer here. Take one more breath, and then let the hands flop to the mat. And vertebrae by vertebrae, little by little, roll it on up to stand. The second the head stacks on the shoulders, find the Dasana Mountain Pose. Root down through all four corners of the feet. Try to activate the quads, draw the navel in, and soften the shoulders. Fingertips energetically reach for the mat, palms face forward. Right? Now look, we're all in different rooms right now, but we're still a community. So let's try and take three good deep breaths together. Right? So deep inhale through the nose, feel your belly, ribs, and collarbone expand, and then open the mouth side out. Just like that. Again, inhale. Exhale. One more time together, inhale. And exhale. Okay, inhale, sweep the arms up, reach for the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Now as you exhale, lead with the chest, chest hinge at the hips, forward fold, Uttanasana. Let's go through some half sun A's. Inhale, hands to shins, long, flat spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, reach for the sky, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold. All right, we'll start to add on here. Inhale up and back, reach for the sky. Exhale, forward fold, reach for the floor. Moving on to sun salutation A. Inhale, hands to shins, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, step back to plank. Take a moment in plank. And just know, guys, when I say vinyasa, we could take knees, chest, chin. We could take chaturanga, dandasana. Or we could skip it, right? So next time you inhale, either put the knees on the mat or roll forward. As you exhale, lower down halfway or drop the chin and chest right between the thumbs for chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. The inhale draws you forward, peel the chest off the mat. If the thighs leave the mat, that's up dog. If the thighs are on the mat, that's cobra, bhujangasana, you're still cool, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward. Keep your left hand on the mat. Take your right hand to the sky, little twist. You could put your left knee down, right, obviously, but if the left knee's off the mat, try to engage your inner thighs. One more deep breath. Cool, frame your front foot. Step your left foot to the top of the mat and fold. Inhale up and back, reach for the sky. 
Exhale, lead with the chest, reach for the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, step back to plank. Take a deep breath in plank. Whatever vinyasa you want, knees, chest, chin, chaturanga, dandasana. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, step the left foot forward. Right hand down, left hand to the sky, a little twist. You know your options, right knee could come to the mat, it could stay lifted. Nice, Ash, put the left fingertip to the sky, yep. One more breath. And now put that left hand on the mat, inhale, step your right foot forward, and fold. Inhale, up and back. We're gonna start to add on from here, exhale, forward fold. Oof, graceful, inhale, hands to shins. Exhale, plant the palms. You could step back to plank. If you like to hop back, try to hop back to chaturanga. Landing with bent elbows, nice mechanics, and move through your vinyasa. Inhale, step your right foot forward. Keep your left hand where it is. Take your right hand to the sky. So now we're gonna add on from this twist. Let's take a moment here. Keep the left heel over the toes. Just like Ash, it's, the angle is perfect. Her right knee is right over the ankle. That's what we're striving for. Now, if you wanna put the left knee down at any point and do the same part of the sequence, you can. But pretend I'm pulling you up by your right fingertips. You're going to start to come up into this lunge twist. So the right knee stays over the ankle, the right hand draws back, the left hand forward. If you can help it, try to keep your palms out, your thumb face up, and you have to squeeze the inner thighs together. There is no version of this where your low half of the body is just chilling, because you'll tip over. Now, if you want, stay like this, or take the left hand to the sky and let the right hand drop back. It's like this, it's like more elegant reverse warrior, but the left side of the body's long. Take one more breath. And then we're gonna slowly come back through center, left hand draws back, left heel flat, and warrior two. Woo! Soft shoulders. The right knee draws to the pinky side of the foot. The weight's in the knife edge of the left foot. One more deep breath. Straighten your right leg, sweep your right hand to the sky, peaceful triangle inhale. And then start to hinge forward, reach, reach, reach for the front of the room. When you can't go any further, right hand to the ankle, shin, or block. And a cool little pro tip for trikonasana, right? So now your right hand is down. Take your left hand, run it along your right arm, all the way up, up, up. And what you'll feel is the left hip draw back, the left shoulder blade open as you kind of open up into trikonasana. Right? So you're trying to drive the left hip back. Also, try to untuck the chin, right? We have a tendency in this pose to tuck our chin right to our chest, right? Draw the chin away, lengthen the, the, the spine and the neck. One more deep breath. And then slowly come on up, rebend your right knee, warrior two, inhale. Cartwheel the hands down, frame your front foot, step back to plank. Let's move through a vinyasa or skip it, your choice. Downward facing dog. Try to lengthen the hips up toward the ceiling. Try to press the chest back. And then let's throw our left foot in the air. Put our left foot by our left thumb. Right hand stays, left hand to the sky. Little twist. So now if you can notice how Ashley's like fingertips from like her left fingertips are stacked straight down her right wrist. Like it's, it's a long line in her wingspan. One more deep breath. Pretend I'm pulling you up by the left fingertips, you're gonna to start to rise. If you wanna put the right knee down at any point for this, you absolutely can. Look how her thumbs are face up, right? That's what we're looking for, palms are forward. If you can help it, tight shoulders, your palms are gonna go down, you know? You wanna sweep the right hand to the sky, left hand down the back leg, do it, long right ribs. One more breath. Now this transition, move slowly. Don't whip yourself around. You're just gonna draw the right hand back, spin the back heel down, and then like that, you're just in it. Just living that warrior two dream. Soft shoulders. 
Try to keep weight in your left heel here. Don't mash your toes into the mat. And straighten your left leg, left hand to the sky. Inhale. And then hinge forward, reach, 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 reach. Left hand slides down, right hand to the sky. If you want to try that little move, I personally love it. You start to run your hand right up the arm, and what you feel as you do it, that right hip starts to slide back along with the shoulder. It's like almost like you're still getting that adjustment you usually get in class, but we're just giving ourselves adjustments now. New world order. One more deep breath. I haven't given an adjustment like three weeks leading up to it because I was freaked out. <laughs> so it's been like two months. I need like a whole class on adjustments again. Start to come on back up. Warrior two on the inhale. And then cartwheel some hands down. Let's frame some feet. Let's move through a vinyasa. Very nice. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Take three deep breaths. feet to come to the outside edges of the mat. So inhale, look to your hands, and let's get those feet to the outside edges of the mat. Walk, step, hop, or skip them. Yep, Malasana squat, and then you're going to sink the seat low. If you have a block, books, blankets, anything you want to put under your seat to make life a little bit easier, uh, Malasana is not my strong pose. I, I, I sometimes still use a block, but what you want to do is you want to push the palms together real firm. You want your elbows to start pushing your knees out, but you also want your knees to start pushing against the elbows. You want this like dual force. Your navel draws in, your spine is long. Take your left hand in front of your left foot. You can stay here or take your left hand in front of your left foot and then sweep your right hand to the sky. Really push the knee and tricep together. If you have a half bind, right hand to the back hip or a full bind here, you can go for it. Right? But don't push it. This is a very intense pose. Right? Take, a, take a moment. And then we can switch sides if we'd like. Right hand in front of the right toes. Left hand in the sky. Right? Full half binds, whatever you want. Nice, actually, like way up on the wrist. back through center. It's either Malasana squat, child's pose, or crow pose if it's in your practice. Hands to the mat. So the knees are going to come to the arms. Biceps, triceps, or into the armpits if you can get them. Ashley can definitely put her in the armpits. This is just crow pose ready. Right? So you start to push the mat away. You're trying to get the big toes to touch if you can get both feet off the mat. Heels toward the, the seat. And then you're just trying to counterbalance. Navel draws in. If you like to hop back to Chaturanga from here, you can. You don't have to. And then we'll, ultimately guys, we're gonna meet back in Malasana squat. Only for a moment, just to pass through. So from Malasana, plant the hands. Lift the hips to the sky, forward fold. Keep the feet where they are, reach for opposite elbows, ears in between the biceps. Let's take a little wide-legged sway here. And then let the hands flat to the mat. Start to heel toe the feet, about fist distance apart. I want you to bend your right knee, straighten your left leg, put your right hand on the mat, a block or a book, take your left hand to the sky. Outside of your left hip is totally engaged right now. Right. Two more breaths. One more. Let's switch. Left hand down. Bend your left knee, straighten your right leg, right hand up. The whole right side of your leg, like above the knee from like the quad up to the hip, is definitely engaged. One more deep breath. And then come back through center forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, reach for the sky. And as you exhale, hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Cool stuff, guys. All right, big toes touch, slight gap in the heels. Inhale, sweep the arms to the sky. Exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose, bend at the ankles, knees and hips. 
Try to roll the weight immediately into the heels. Try to slide the knees behind the toes. Then squeeze the inner thighs, squeeze the outer hips together. Okay. Navel draws in. Now this gives you a very, very sturdy base. You probably feel even a little more steady on your feet. If you want to try to sink the seat just a little bit lower, go crazy for three, two, one. Forward fold hands to the mat. Hands to shins, inhale, prepare. Exhale, plant the palms, step back, hop back, dance back. Let's move through a vinyasa or skip it. We're going to upward facing dog, stretch through the belly, soft shoulders, very nice. Downward facing dog. Okay, put the right foot in the sky, three-legged. Push the heel back, press the chest back, take a breath. And let's put our right foot by our right thumb. Spin the back heel flat, we're going full warrior one here. There it is. Right knee stays over the ankle. You can see your big right toe. Try to keep your hips square to the front of your mat. deep breath. Okay, take your arms out like a T. Just like before, you're going to take the left arm under the right, wrap the arms, maybe the elbows, the, I mean the forearms and the palms touch for eagle. Now if you can help it, draw the elbows and the forearms forward, try to keep that same space, and then like an elephant raising its trunk, start to lift the elbows and the forearms to the sky, but the head fall back. And now we're coming for humble warrior. Exhale, start to fold forward, just an eagle armed variation of it. So the right shoulder falls into the right knee or on the inside of it. Roll the chin to the chest. Let the elbows and the forearms be heavy for three. Two, one. Come on back up. Now I want you to put weight in your right foot. Flip onto your left toes. Deep inhale. Notice you exhale, step up, draw your left knee into your chest. And then you know where we're going from here. Cross the left leg over the right. And find eagles. You've got a lot of options. If you have the double wrap, you can, you can take it. If you want, like Ash is doing, give yourself a little kickstand with the toes. That's genius. Can't teach that. Inner, in, engage your inner thighs here, right? Squeeze the navel in. You can stay here or start to lower down. Elbows come to the knees. You can tuck the chin to the chest. You really have to engage the inner thighs, the outer hips here. It's going to be very tough. For three, two, on one, slowly come on back up. Keep the arms like they are, unwrap the leg and start to press your left leg back, Vira Vajrasana three. Now, you can keep the arms like this. We've had the arms in eagle for a minute. If you like it, keep it. If you want the hands to drop to the mat, come alongside the body or run it heart center, whatever variation of warrior three you want, take it. But flex the left foot for one more deep breath, inhale. Now exhale, take your left foot to the back of the mat. Put your left knee down. Try to keep the right knee over. The ankles sweep the arms to the sky, Anjaneyasana. We're getting left hip flexor here, so let the hips sink, draw the heart up, draw the belly in. Now keep breathing. One more deep breath. Inhale. And then exhale, full frame your front foot. Let's get the hamstring. Send the hips, yeah, perfect, Ash. If you have blocks, books, or thick pets, grab them for your props. Send your hips back. Try to straighten your right leg. Flex your right toes. Like if you're at home right now rocking two fat cats, like this, they're perfect for this. Give them like little belly rugs right now and everybody wins. One more deep breath. Cat or eight. Cat logic. That just <laughs> cracks me up. Slowly start to walk your hands forward, rebend your right knee, and then tuck your left toes. Step back to plank. We're going full vinyasa. Up dog. 
strong. Exhale down. We got one more side. Left foot in the sky. Left foot by the left arm. Spin the back heel flat. Use it to come on up, warrior one. All right, we're just taking a moment to set ourselves here. Take your arms out like a T. Right arm on your left. Try to draw the elbows up, forearms forward. Just take a moment, just feeling yourself in this pose, and then we're gonna add on. And then let the elbows start, like an elephant raising its trunk, let the elbows sweep to the sky, let the head fall back. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Left elbow, or left shoulder inside the left knee, humble warrior. Right? You're not using any muscles in the arms, right? You're just letting the elbows and the forearms be heavy. And try to look toward your belly button. Keep the neck long. For three. For two. That looks super cool in front of the mural. For one. Slowly come on back up. Flip onto those right toes. Inhale. And then step up right knee into the chest. Boom. Cross that right leg over the left. We're coming to Garudasana, eagle pose. Any variation, but take a moment. See how Ash, look how Ashley's uh, torso is straight. That's what we want right now. <laughs> right? Just take a moment here. It's almost like you're in chair pose. You're trying to keep the torso up. And then as you exhale, let's start to hinge forward. The elbows can come to the thighs, the knees. The chin can roll to the chest. This is a very very hard pose. So if you fall out of it, who cares? Just try it again. This is not easy. It's easy for me. I'm barking orders. It's not easy for Ed. She's had to do all this. One more deep breath. And then slowly come on back up. Unwind. We're going to press the right leg back to hip height. Vira Vajrasana. Three. You could keep eagle arms. You could take any variation you want. But try to draw the navel in, try to keep the chest up for three more breaths. Two more breaths. One more breath. The right foot finds the back of the mat. The right knee drops. We're coming to Anjane Asana, low lunge. Left knee over the ankle. Heart draws to the sky. Hips sink down to the mat. Navel draws in. It's a lot of right hip flexor. It's really all it is. Almost there, guys. One more deep breath. Now frame that front foot. Send the hips back, straighten your legs, or straighten your left leg. Yeah, you wanna use blocks? Use blocks, right? Flex the left toes, draw the left hip back. A lot of left hamstring. You're trying to draw your nose, your chin forward. Like you could even see it. Ashley's drawing her head forward. You could, you could actually see that. And then what that does is it gives her leverage to draw the left hip a little further back, intensifying the stretch. One more breath. Slowly walk the hands out. Step back to plank. Let's take our final vinyasa of class. And we're gonna just start to cool it down. So if you would like, you can obviously come back to downward facing dog. If you wanna take a quick child's pose just to catch your breath. By all means, let's take a moment Ultimately, we're going to come to Pigeon Pose. So when you're ready, we'll meet back in Down Dog, if you're not there yet. But let's put our right foot in the sky, three-legged. Draw your right knee into your chest. And let's put our right shin at the top of the mat. Right knee by the right wrist, but if the hip is tight, your right heel is going to draw toward you. Right? Untuck the back toes. You can peek over the right shoulder if you want. Some people like to walk their hands back to their hips to sit up tall palms forward. Some people don't. But ultimately, when you're ready, start to walk the hands out. If you have props you like to use, right, you could use them. You want to come to hands, forearms, blocks. But we're going to take 10 good deep breaths. Just sink into that right hip. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale through the nose.
exhale breath to help soften into that hip just a little bit more. so the heel draws to the back. Whatever hand feels good here, left or right, you can reach back. If you have a fancy pigeon trick, a mermaid bind, a back bend, anything here, just like that, effortless, go ahead and do it. Take a moment. Otherwise, we're just drawing the heel in, we're getting the quad. And then gently release, plant the palms, tuck the toes, put your right foot in the sky, three-legged dog. Bend your right knee, stack those hips. We're shaking it out, we're making circles. Ultimately, you wanna flip your dog, flip your dog. Hips up, heart forward, wild thing pose. So wild, great mudra. And then flip it back over. We're hitting downward facing dog. Right foot down, left foot up. And then slowly draw the knee into the chest. Let's go pigeon pose left. Knee by the wrist, heel draws in. Right. Look over your left shoulder, make sure your back leg is straight. If you prefer to walk the hands back first, do it. You ultimately want to sink down, do that too. We're taking 10 good ones. Inhale through the nose. Exhales are where we find the softness in that hip. Start to walk the hands under the shoulders, peel the chest up, bend your right knee, whatever hand feels good, right? You got a super cool pigeon trick, you want to go back bends, you want to go binds, right? Do what feels good. And then don't slam the foot down, right? Gently release your way out of the pose, plant the palms, tuck your right toes, let's put that left foot in the sky. We're bending knees, we're stacking hips. We're doing what feels good, we're making circles, we're shaking it out, we might be doing none of it. We might just be here to flip some dogs, hips up, heart forward. And then we are flipping it back over. 
downward facing dog. Inhale, roll out to plank. Now from here, don't overthink it. Super simple. We're just going to do about 50 push-ups. Deep <laughs> inhale. Seriously though, with your exhale, with all the control in the world, hug the elbows in. Lower your shelves straight to the mat. Right, come right to the belly. Roll right over onto your back. I want you to take a little counter stretch to the hips, take the soles of the feet together, let the knees fall out wide. Supta Baddha Konasana, take three breaths. Two. One. Let's come on up, take the hands to the outsides of the knees, close them up like a book. Let's get ready for bridge pose. Setu Bandasana, graze the back of the heels with the middle fingers. Plant the palms, plant the feet, and when you're ready, lift those hips to the sky. Bridge pose. Okay. There's weight in the heels, the inner thighs are engaged, and you're rolling your chin away from your chest. If you want to roll the arms under the back, interlace the fingers, palms touch, do it. Right. You want to come to tiptoes, you want to lift one leg in the sky. If there's, there's variations here, whatever you want to do, go ahead and knock yourself out. Two more breaths. One more. Slowly lower the hips down. Bring the feet mat's distance. Let the knees touch. Little windshield wipers to release the low back. And then find stillness. We're going to take one more back then. Options are for a bridge, which we just did, or if Urdhva Dhanurasana wheel pose is in your practice, plant your hands. Uh, take your hands over your shoulders, fingers face your feet. If you're going for bridge, graze the heels. Whatever it is, plant the hands, plant the feet, lift the hips to the sky. Okay. If you're in wheel pose, try to straighten the arms, try to press your heart forward, but roll your chin away from your chest. Let your throat be long. Try to keep the glutes and the legs active. For three, two, one, and then gently tuck the chin to the chest. Everybody lowers down. Grab hold of the knees. Give yourself a little hug. Rock from side to side. And then find stillness. Take your arms out like a T or a cactus. Drop your knees to the right. Look over to the left. Little twist. Take the knees over to the left, look over to the right, opposite side twist. And then come on back through center. Let's find Ananda Velasana, happy baby. Let the knees come to the armpits, let the feet come to the sky, like you're pushing your hands into your feet, your feet into your hands. Try to keep the tailbone and the shoulders on the mat. If you want to rock from side to side, go ahead and do it. I'm going to bend the knee, straighten the leg. Go ahead and do that too. And if there's any other poses that you were hoping I was going to call that I did not call today, uh, now would be a great time to do it. Um, but as you start to wrap up your happy baby, we can start to exit that pose and start to work our way into Shavasana. Right, so let the legs extend, let the feet splay. The palms lay next to the hips face up and then let your body just press heavily into the mat. Just breathe. Right. Let the body be heavy, let your thoughts be light. And just focus in on the subtle ways the body feels different. As opposed to when we began our practice.
guys. Let's start to bring awareness back into the body. Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Begin to roll out the ankles and the wrists. Deepening the breath. Take the hands overhead. Stretch and reach in both directions. Rock your head from side to side and smile. And then gather the knees into the chest. Give yourself one final tight little squeeze. You can rock from side to side, but ultimately end up on your right. And when you're there, just take a moment to think of one thing in your life you're crazy grateful for. When you've got that one thing, start to press yourself up to Sukhas in the easy seat, where we began. Root down through the sits bones, draw the navel in, sit up nice and tall. The hands can come to the knees, into the lap, or at heart center. But close the eyes, bow the head. Guys, thank you so, so much for taking a little time, hanging with us, hopping up on your mat, dedicating it to your practice. I hope you found what you were looking for, got out of this practice what it is you were looking for, if anything. Uh, we hope you're doing well. We hope you're feeling well mentally, physically, everywhere in between. And as always, we love you guys. There's nothing you can do about it. Namaste. Namaste.